everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another broadcast of Eyes Can See. Again today, we have to do this a little different. But thank you guys for tuning in. So let's get started. I know I'm late today, but we're going to get started with prayer. Thank you, Father, for blessing me with this platform that it may enlighten your people as to who they are and whose they are, that we may all learn about our stolen knowledge together in Jesus' name. The knowledge of our stolen history together in Jesus' name. Amen. And Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, and to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And today, our topic is the woman and the dragon. And I will parallel my topic today with scriptures uh, that give a broader picture of what is truly going on with us and in Revelations 12 and to tell this biblical story of what is to come, which is prophecy. So Revelations 12, 1 through 17, says a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head so who is this woman well actually the woman represents Israel some say she represents the church but see Israel didn't come out of the church the church came out of Israel. So this woman is Israel. She represents Israel in Revelations 12, 1 through 17. So she was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Isaiah 66 and 8 says, as soon as the woman who is Israel, goes into labor, she brings forth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. This is Satan and the fallen angels, you all. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And, he was, and, and her child was snatched up to God to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, to a place prepared up for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. This is where the second exodus comes into play. Genesis 15, 13 through 14, and Acts 7, 6 through 7. It says, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon against his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. 
the great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Serpent people are Satan's children in the earth. They are a mixed seed. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now have come the salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. Now I want to say something about this. The salvation through the name of Jesus and the power of his name is given to us, his children, who receive Jesus as Lord, as Lord and Savior and who receives our Heavenly Father as their Heavenly Father. So we have the gifts of salvation, like I said, through the name of Jesus, which there is power in his name. That is how we overcome in this day and age. So now, so it says, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters. So the kingdom of God is within his children. The written word which is spoken out of our mouths is the authority that the Messiah gave us through his word. So we must know that we have an authority of the Messiah, which is, a, which is the spoken word of God that comes out of our mouth. So let me read verse 10 again. It says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah for the accused of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Before Jesus gets back, we must walk by faith and not by sin. Fight. Jesus left us with the authority as believers, with an active sword, which is the word of God that we use by faith to manifest its power. So we need to know these things, y'all, that there's a responsibility that we have in the earth. And that responsibility is to speak the word of God through faith. Faith is like money in this natural realm. That's what faith is in the spirit realm. We are spirit beings first, born in a flesh body, but we're having a natural experience, but we are spirit beings first. And in being a spirit being, then we must know how to walk by faith and not by sight. Because we're not just governed by this flesh. Not, we're not just governed by this flesh. We are spirit beings first. So they triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So, we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives and our families, our loved ones, and our friends for spiritual protection against the enemy by speaking with the evidence of God in our lives. So, by the blood of the Lamb, which that blood is our spiritual covering, our spiritual protection, it's just like when God told the Egyptians, I mean the, uh, the uh, Israelites, who were in Egypt at the time to put the blood upon the doorposts of the building. You know, they were supposed to put it around the doorposts of their houses. So now we put that blood on the doorpost of our hearts, you all, to cover us, to keep us safe, to keep us protected against all the evil wiles of the devil, the enemy. 
So we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, our families, loved ones, and friends for spiritual protection against the enemy by speaking with the evidence of God in our lives. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Who lives in the heavens, y'all? It says, therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Who are in the heavens, y'all? We need to examine this thing. We do need to read that book of the watchers about, um, uh, about you know, uh, what is really going on with, you know, this book was taken, well, actually, this book was taken out of the Bible. Uh, the last time that these books were printed was in uh, being a part of the Bible uh, in 1611. So um, it is. It, it was a part of, I believe, the New Testament. It was books. You know, we have books missing out of the Bible that were not put in the Bible for the simple fact. If these books were a part of the Bible, then these books would uh, uh, tell us who is who in the world? It, it will give you a clear understanding of who Esau is, of who Jacob is, of who the people in the world are today, who the nations are in the world. It will give you that information because that is what these books do. They give you knowledge of what is truly going on and who you know it is talking about so those books were removed because it wasn't time yet for the world to find out what this is truly all about so with that being said we will um so we plead the blood of jesus over our lives our families loved ones and friends for spiritual protection against the enemy by speaking with the evidence of God in our lives. I wanted to reiterate that so you can know that we do have spiritual protection, you know, in this day and age. And as I said, therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. I was saying, who lives in the heavens? But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down unto you. So he is in this realm affecting us in our everyday lives, on our jobs, in our homes, you know, he's in our health, uh, in our financial, you know, uh, uh, lives. The enemy affects us wherever he can. can. <clears throat> so he is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. This is the age that we are living in. Satan has deceived the whole world as to the true identity of God's children. He wants to divide and conquer through racism. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled down to earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time. Out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spilled water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with a torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commandments and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So who is her offspring? Who is this woman's offspring? I told you this woman is Israel, y'all. Because Israel didn't come out of the church. The church came out of Israel. So who is the offspring? The church. 
as I said, who was founded out of Israel, the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, and the 12 disciples in the upper room. Y'all remember that Bible story, right? In Acts, when uh, Jesus left the earth, you know, when, when they took him out of the earth, then he sent back when he went up into heaven. Okay, he, he died and went down into hell, took the keys, made a spectacle, took the keys of, of the kingdom back from Satan that he took from Adam. So this is how this story goes. Satan took the keys from Adam. He tricked Adam out of the keys to, to, to uh, the kingdom of, of life, to, to the kingdom of heaven, to the good things, you know, to uh, Jesus conquered hell and death and the sting of the grave. He gave us back life and that more abundantly. He did all of that when he took those keys from Satan who took them from, who tricked Adam out of the keys. So Jesus had to go back to redeem Adam, the first man from his fall. So when he did that, he made a spectacle out of Satan, the same cross or tree that Jesus hung on. Mm -hmm. He hung all them things upon that cross of that tree and made a living spectacle out of Satan. So now Jesus has the keys to the kingdom. He took them back for us. And that is how we are redeemed through the finished work of the cross of what Jesus did for us. So that is, that, that is the Holy Spirit and 12 disciples in that upper room. Like I said in Acts, go read that story about how the church was founded, how it started. When Jesus left the earth, how he sent the Ruach back for our help, our protection to help us get through in the times that we are living in. And the black race is under attack. We have people missing. We have large numbers of women and girls and even men. Our black men are targeted to be executed by the police and others. Then we have to deal with black on black crime. And we can find that spoken of in Isaiah 3, 4 and 5 and 12. In verses 4 and 5 and 12. The world is living a lie because Satan has gone out and tricked the whole world. He's got the whole world believing a lie about who the true children are. He have those people called Jew, who, who are calling themselves Jewish in today, in, in uh, modern day Israel, who got that land through a promissory note, y'all. They got this through a promissory note. Now, how is one nation of people going to promise something that don't even belong to them? They, they got this promissory note called the Balfour. De declaration the Balf is an agreement it was given to them by Britain Great Britain gave them and promised them that uh, let me see the let, how did this go uh, the so-called Jewish people went to Great Britain and promised them that if they got America involved in the war and that America would win the war that they would want them to give them the land of Israel so that they can go and find and, and, and found a and found it a homeland which was not even their land because they are not this people because they adopted they adopted Judaism and Judaism is not what we Hebrews or Israelite people are under in the first place we are not, we are not uh, 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 Jews, we are not, I mean, we are Judaism, we're not under Judaism, we're not under any of that stuff. This was our law book. It was a way for us to be taught how to live this life according to the way God would have us to live. So our law book 
was taken and made into religion. And we all know that religion kills. Look at the Muslim religion, which they took the Muslim faith. And with that faith, you have Sharia law. That law kills. If you don't serve according to what Sharia law says, then that law kills. Christianity. Chris Christians went around back in the dark ages and killed the people. Now God said, choose you this day whom you will serve. He didn't say that he was going to kill you if you made a choice not to serve him. It's your choice. But there's consequences. So at some point in your life, you do run into the consequences of what you chose. But he does not put a sword on you at that point in time. He lets you live your life according to what you choose. You are the one who chooses yea or nay, whom you will serve. Whether you will, you know, have yourself as a God, have God, our Heavenly Father as your God, you know, through Jesus our Lord and Savior, or yourself as a God, or Satan as a God. So it's your choice, whatever you want to choose. But all these other religions, they will kill you. If you don't do it their way, that's not God's way. That is Satan's way. That is the way that he has sent, sent this into the earth and how he wants to control people through some form of religion. So, as Isaiah 3, verses 4 through 5 and 12 says, this is the black on black crime, y'all, because we are a stiff neck and hard-hearted people. That's why Yahweh sent this to us. He knew at some point, by sending us into this 400-year punishment, that we would come out of it. And when we came out, that we would be stiff-necked and hard-hearted, that we wouldn't need him anymore. So that's why he put black-on-black -black crime in our communities to keep us on our knees, to keep us connected to him, to keep us needing him. So let's read these verses. He says, and I will give children, verse 4 of Isaiah 3, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. What about these gangs, y'all? They start off very young as gang members. These gang members, being very young, in initiation, they have to go kill somebody to be initiated in their gang. So it says, and I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them, and the people shall oppress everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Don't we see that happening today? How the people are oppressed, especially black communities. Black communities are oppressed. And everyone by another. Don't you see that gangs are in our community? Don't you see people being bullies? How, you know, because a person don't like you, you know, living in your community or whatever, then they think that they're supposed to bully you for you to do what they say do or for you to, you know, be on their agenda or whatever agenda they have, you know. I mean, come on, you see this. You see this happening and a child should behave himself proudly against the ancient. You see these young, young people, you know, don't have any respect for our elders. Come on, that's not right. That's not what our law book has taught us. Our, our way of life has taught us. We're to respect our elders. We're not to behave ourselves proudly against them, talking all kinds of craziness to them, calling them out their names, disrespecting them. And the base against the honorable. Yes, 
those that have no knowledge, those who did not go to school, those who don't know a thing, those who are immature and stupid, just silly. How they uplift themselves against those that are honorable, against those that do have knowledge, against those that do have something to offer, those that can help improve our communities. It's just like casting your pearls before the swine. You know? How the base. You know, uplift themselves against the honorable. And as for my people, children are the oppressors and women rule over them. My people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. So there you go again, y'all. It says it again. It says women rule over the children. The children are the oppressors. Isn't that so true of us, y'all? These gangs. They rule over us. They oppress our neighborhoods, black neighborhoods. It's these children who are the gang members. And the women, we, we are a nation of childless, of fatherless, of fatherless children. Our fathers are missing in the homes. We don't have big brothers, uncles. We don't have those who are not pedophiles to look after our children to help raise these fatherless children the fathers are absent the men are missing in our children's lives we need our men we need you back in our children's lives this is a problem this black on black crime can pretty much be ruled out if we do what we're supposed to do as a people, you all. You know, it's not just left up to anybody else. It's left up to us. These are our communities. These are our children. So, uh, and... Okay, I was looking over some other things to see if I got everything that I was supposed to tell you about that message. So, again, with the woman and the dragon, so just to reiterate that the woman is Israel, her offspring is the church, the dragon is making war with us. That's why our men can be killed innocently. Our black men on a traffic stop can be killed innocently because this is an attack from Satan. This is what he is doing to our people. And the reason he is doing this to our people is because you are descendants of the children of Israel, black people. When you were taken from the continent of Africa, you were taken because you had to go into, you had to fulfill a punishment of 400 years. This happened to nobody else in the earth. I know bad things happen to other nationalities of people in the earth. I'm not talking about those people. I am talking about God's chosen children. And the people who are portraying themselves as God's chosen children today in the earth are not his children. Those people are Khazar people. They are Yafet. They fall under Yafet. You can find this in Genesis 9 and 27 and even Genesis 10 1 through 5 
It tells you who these people are. It tells you where you can find them. You had three sons of Noah who repopulated the earth after the great flood. Now through these three sons, we are Shem. The promise of the inheritance, the promise of the blessing, the promise of the right to rule falls under Jacob. It falls under Shem, not Ham. In Genesis 9 and 27, it tells you that Yaphet will live in Shem's tent. Okay, who, is, who else is out of place in the earth? Who else is hidden in the earth? Who else don't know their true nationality other than what was assigned to them? It was assigned to us to be called Negroes. It was assigned to us to be known as Canaan, to be known as Ham's seed. But do you find any of the, the, the uh, scriptures that we are now living that you can find under Shem? All the scriptures are under Shem. The promises are under Shem. <laughs> they're not under Ham, they're not under Yahweh. So you must know who you are, Israel, melanated Israel. You are not who the world tells you that you are. You were taken, you were snatched from your country and brought into this land. So we are a nation within a nation. There's something specific that will happen with us. That is what the Bible is telling us. But when you misread the Bible and you put the wrong people as the scriptural people, then you miss the true message. You miss finding yourself. You miss what the Bible is truly teaching us. Do you know the whole platform in this Bible is the first law that was given to us is to love thy God with our whole mind, body, soul, spirit, strength, and heart, right? Okay, well, the second law to that is to love your neighbor as yourself. And loving your neighbor as yourself, that means loving black people. That means loving brown people. That means loving people that don't look like you. And for whatever reasons that you hate an African American because of their skin color and their hair, you need to get that straight. Because you're gonna be shocked to wake up and find the people that you've been thinking was God's children, mm -mm. <laughs> those are not the true children. That's Satan's spin on our, on our law book, on our way of life, I should say. On our way of life, that's Satan's spin on our way of life, which he used our book of the law that guides us and teach us how to walk this walk and live this life the way our Heavenly Father desired us to and designed us to. When you find that, how Satan took those things and twisted it, then you will begin to understand. Then you can put things into their proper place and you can get a better perspective on what the Bible is talking about. Then we can understand the Bible because right now there is no understanding as far as what the scriptures truly mean. Now, man gives it understanding through what he thinks it means, but we will all come to the correct knowledge of what all of this is about as we keep our eyes open. And even though we've come into a new year of 2020, vision, where we can see now, mm, let's know that the new year, the Hebrew new year, really don't start until the spring. 
springtime begins the Hebrew calendar of a new year. Wintertime does not begin the new year. Only on the Gregorian, the Gregorian calendar does the new year start in the winter when things are dead. Springtime is newness, a newness in the air. That is when the newness of the new year starts. So just know as we walk this thing out, the 400 years of the Africans of the diaspora has completed and we are now waiting for the second exodus to take place. As sure as the African of the diaspora was snatched from his land of the land that he ran into and called his own. As sure as he was taken from that land, just know we are leaving this place. We did not come to stay here in America. We came to fulfill the punishment of what our ancestors brought us into. Because Yahweh told them, choose you this day whom you will serve. He, cho he told them that before he even took them into the promised land of what the rules were to stay in inhabiting that land. But our stiff neck and hard-hearted ancestors chose differently. They chose to live the life that they wanted to without considering our Heavenly Father or the rules that he put in place, the laws that he put in place. He put those laws in place for a reason. Look at our world now. <laughs> that was the reason he put those laws into effect. That's the reason he wrote those laws. Take a good look at our existence today in this world. We would not have all the pedophile that we have. We, will not, we would not have all this sex. Sex, sex, sex. Everywhere you look, just sex. Back in the day, everybody used to be all covered up. Our women used to dress. Our women and men used to dress so fly, so nice. I mean, we had on our Sunday's best. Seemed like every day we would dress with pride. We would dress with having that pride about us. You know, we cared about how we looked. But now, we don't even hardly wear clothes no more. Our women don't even hardly wear clothes anymore. We went from being a, 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 a highly blessed people. Even though we had to go through 400 years, we're still blessed people. You see, we're still here. But we went from being a people who cared so much about ourselves to being a people who don't even care no more. We don't even have the same care or concern for ourselves. We don't have the same care and concern for one another. We used to be a close-knit people. Even though 400 years taught us to pull each other down, to act like crabs in a barrel, you know, to hate one another, to go against one another, to fight one another, to have jealousy for one another. We still cared about one another. If we needed to march, we marched. If we needed to group together, you know, to come together for a cause, we came together for a cause. We need to get ourselves back together, black folk. You are a special people. You don't know how special you are. So I want to leave you with another message before I close out. Um, I want to read you a word from one of the prophets. And this, this lady is named Jamie Rogue Ball. 
Roba. That's what it is. Jamie Roba. And their message is in 2020, chaos is leaving. You're being positioned to recover. Okay? Israel and the church. I'm speaking to you. And remember, church, you came out of Israel. And who you think is Israel? Them Jewish people? That is not Israel. So, know that this is talking to you, melanated Israel and the church. Beloved, are you excited about this new year, 2020? You should be. The Lord has some major things in store for you. His beloved child. If you're curious about what exactly he would like to do in your life, this is the word the Lord gave me for you for 2020. 2020 is a year of hearth and home. 2020 is a year in which I am healing you through your own efforts. I am directing you right now to take steps toward your own healing. I am teaching you the way you should go. I have already obliterated the things that stood in the way of your progress. You, sh you have passed the test. I repeat, you have passed the test. Hey now, the test was a test of healing and you didn't even know it. The test was heart surgery, heart surgery. You have allowed me to perform surgery on your heart and now you are positioned. And now you are positioned. You have allowed me to perform surgery on your heart and now you are positioned to recover. Positioned to recover. In 2020, your recovery shall be swift and sure. You already know what you should do. And now you will want to do it. Follow your desire to obey me. Be assured that you can push other things out of your schedule with no negative repercussions. Obey me and me only. Steward yourself well and recover your health, your wholeness, your sanctity, your sanity. Not that you are insane, but you have felt very often that you have been losing your sanity for the last several years. Your margin in your schedule and your peace and calm in the midst of chaos. The chaos is leaving in 2020. Because of the chaos you have experienced over the last three years, you have become, you have come to realize that chaos is possible to live in, but it is not pleasant. It is not enjoyable. You can have a life of peace instead, and in 2020, I will help you manifest a life of peace. In 2020, however, your calendar will not fit as many things on it. You know, just know, your reduced capacity is from me. Fear not. It is not a reduced capacity to be less effective. It is instead a reduced capacity to be busy. Busyness for its own sake is not from me. That's what the Lord of God, that's what our Heavenly Father says. In 2020, I am repairing the breaches and elevating or, right, or raising again the walls that have been torn down. I am anointing you to be at home this is because i am healing and repairing things at the core and i need you in your environment of comfort to do it focus on me and find peace in my hedge during this healing season allow me to hedge you in my hedging looks like lots of extra time with me you will sometimes have no peace about taking on additional good things. You will find no flow in busyness and lack of margin in your schedule. You will find yourself compelled to rest by my spirit. My hedge around your life is a healing hedge. It is a restful hedge and a peaceful one. Look for me to provide ways for you to rest that are better and greater than you could ever provide 
for yourself. In 2020, I am rebuking the destroyer for your sake. I am not. I am rebuking the destroyer, the destroyer for your sake. I am anointing you to make changes you have always wanted to make. You see my eternal purpose and are able to sustain it now. So in 2020, you will come out of league with the devil in all your habits. You hear that? You will come out of league with the devil in all your habits. You will find me purifying your life as you cooperate with me. This, is, this will not happen without effort on your part, but I will provide all my anointing that you want and need. You have to steward my anointing well, though. I will not make decisions for you. It is high time for you to stand on your own two feet and choose to please me and live for my eternal purposes. These things are not too hard for you. They are near you in your heart and in your mouth. The enemy has tried to use your own habits to destroy you. But in 2020, you will find that I am removing the next onion layer of hurts and wounds in your life. As you focus on me each day and the hurts and wounds that you didn't even know were there will fall away. And your daily life will become more purposeful. I am restoring your foundations. I'm restoring your foundations in 2020. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? You need your foundation to be set properly and in good order. Your foundations have been rocked over the last few years, but you are still standing for you have been built on a rock and the rock is me. You have some cracks in your foundation and the cracks in your foundation are stress fra fractures brought on by tectonic earthquakes in the atmosphere and daily life around you. Never fear though, these stress fractures may hurt right now, but I will not allow your foot to be moved. I am healing the fractures in your foundation that have been brought on by the reeling of your world, and I am healing you of the pain in 2020. By the end of 2020, I will have healed you so completely that there is not even there will not even be a scar 2020 will be your year of health of receiving your year of health and of receiving my components for your health is this year are lots of time with me rest in your schedule Margin in your schedule, exercise and purposeful choices, exercise and purposeful choices, quietness, surrounding yourself with godly friends who run in the same lane as you, a community with whom you share your life with. In 2020, you will see heavens like you've never seen heaven before. So in 2020, you will see heaven like you've never seen heaven before. Fear not, little flock. This is not a bad thing. It is a function of rest. When you rest and are in the spirit of the Lord's day, and every day is the Lord's day, I am able to call you up here where I am. Believe me, for heavenly encounters that you have never seen before, such as hearing angelic songs and hearing the angels singing them around my throne, Visions and dreams of heaven and of my throne room. Listening in on conversations that I am having with my son, Jesus, and my Holy Spirit. Hearing music from heaven that has never been heard or played on the earth before. Having me visit you in person. That's the main thing right there, y'all. Having him visit us in person. Ooh, yes. These things are a normal part of Christianity, and I want you 
to believe me or them. Tools and gifts for 2020. Uh, I have also given you beautiful tools for 2020. And some of your tools are things you don't even know how to use. Don't be afraid, learn to use them. You can do it. I am with you always to help you learn. These tools were the desire of my heart and you delight yourself in me, so I gave them to you. It was my joy and pleasure to do so. So use the tools. Learn the instruments. Use the beautiful and helpful things. I have provided them for my storehouse. You have had a hard time accepting these tools. You have felt that you have had to give them away, to give away the beautiful tools I have given you. However, you do not. They are simply my gifts from my storehouse in heaven. I created and crafted the artisans who made the tools. They have been downloads from my gift closet in heaven since they were originated in the minds of their creators, whom I created to craft my gifts on the earth. I want to encourage you to embrace the beautiful things I have given you. Don't let your heart get attached to them and don't let them be treasures of your heart. Keep me as your treasure and as your chief joy. However, you need to value the gifts I give you. How can you receive more from heaven when you reject heaven's gifts, heaven's first gifts? When I give you entry level gifts from heaven and you reject them because they are not so nice, how can I give you nicer gifts? There is a progression in gift giving as well as, a, as, well as gift giving in the kingdom. You have always known that there is a progression of gift giving. You start being a giver by sm giving small gifts. You learn to give by giving away things of progressive value. You give small offerings. Then over time you learn to be able to give larger ones. This is because your stewardship increases and the level of your responsibility increases as well. But your receiver has to stretch the same way your giver has to stretch. If I give you something nice and you do not value it, how can I continue? My word tells you not to throw your holy things before the dogs. In other words, or cast your pearls before the swine. Mm -hmm. Don't give your best treasures to those who cannot value them. This principle works for me too. I adhere to my word. It is, my, it is a manifestation of me. I cannot do anything else other than what my word says. So if you want more from me, value what you have received. Thank me and bless me and what I have given you. Use what I have given you. Bless what I have given you and care for it well. As you honor the gifts I have placed in your hands from my storehouse in heaven, you will find me giving you more gifts. I desire to empty my storehouses on your behalf this year. The storehouses in heaven are full, and I have many more things I have conceived in my bosom that I desire to create. I need room in my storehouses. I have years worth of gifts piled up to give you. Gifts that, have, gifts that you have heretofore not seen, been able to receive, although I have tried to convince you many times to receive them. I desire to pour out on you today those things that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, and that which you have not, that which has not even entered into your heart that I want to do for you. So ask me, ask me for things every day. Like, pour me out all those gifts today, plus the year's worth of prayer gifts that are still stored up for me, Father. Do those things for me today that I can't even be convinced of. Give me the gifts today that I don't even know to ask for. It is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and I need an outlet for my creativity. 
My creativity is a driving force. So I still create daily and I desire to use my creativity on your behalf. In 2020, pray this prayer daily. Lord, ex exercise your creativity on my behalf. Give me permission to create in your life again through your prayers. Let me manufacture things in your life by the forge of my spirit that you can't even imagine. Ask me to do these, these things and you will be stunned at what I do. I say again, you will be stunned, astound, flabbergasted at my creative force in your life. I love you, my child. Your cup runs over and you don't even know it. You have more than you know and you will continue to receive all that I have for you as you press into me. Rest and believe me for bigger. Hallelujah. I receive this word. Do you? If you do, then stop and thank and honor the Lord for his promise. Draw a line in the sand and tell him that you believe it. This word I just gave you is from Jamie Robot, uh, from his presence. You can email Jamie at fromhispresence.com. His web, their website is www.fromhispresence.com. And that is the word that I want to leave with you all today. And I hope that you tuned in and that you found this message enlightening and that you share with everyone who we are and whom we are because time is coming to pass that we will soon be discovered we will soon be revealed rather because all creation are waiting for the sons of god to be revealed that is who you and I are according to who the children, the true children of the descendants of the children of Israel are. We are melanated Israel and our time is coming to be revealed in the earth. We need to know who we are. Wake up, Jacob. Your name is Israel. You are melanated Israel. So be blessed, enjoy, have a great weekend, and remember to share, share, share. Let's create unity among us, unity in our community, y'all. So in Jesus' name, I'll leave you with this. Be blessed, everybody. Love you all. Blessings. Goodbye for now.